You know, kids, like any good artist, your buddy Uncle Ben here is a shameless thief. And one of my favorite guys to rip off is Jake E. Lee. For example, I lifted this sequence from the end of his amazing Bark at the Moon solo. And then I made one tiny change to the phraseology to make it my own. I blatantly ripped it off and nobody's the wiser. Other than like everybody watching this video. Anyway, this is a great example of taking something that you learned from another player and making it your own, and it's also just a great lick to use to warm up or toss into your solos. I stole that lick, and so can you. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Today's video is a lesson on how to become a more better, more creative thief. I'm going to show you guys how I started off with one of Jakey e. Lee's licks that he plays in the Bark at the Moon solo and turned it into something of my own that I could blatantly rip off and nobody would ever know. Because let's be honest, we all learn from each other. This is all part of the process, so you might as well embrace it and have some fun with it. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today for all kinds of goodies. This week, everybody who supports the channel, even for just a buck a month, is going to get access to downloadable tabs as well as practice tracks at a variety of tempos that I made to go along with this lesson for both licks. I'm also going to be uploading the guitar profiles that we can build your own perfect practice session. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm going to be playing this brand new Jackson American Series SL2HT. This is the first American-made hardtail soloist, that means it's a neck through, that the company has ever done and they sent me one to check out and I am blown away. Okay, here's a first for you guys. I literally just unboxed this thing like 10 minutes before I started making the video. Didn't adjust anything and started recording with it. Didn't turn a screw, nothing. It came out of the box just ripping. I can't wait to use this thing more because just like Jake, I love myself a hardtail super strat. And I'm gonna be playing that Bad Larry through my Synergy rig. I'm using the Saldano SLO module today. Yeah, let's hear those licks again at stepdad speed. So the original phrasing idea that I'm ripping off here comes at the end of the Bark at the Moon solo after the end of those modal ascending runs. If you've never learned Bark at the Moon, I strongly recommend that you do. I've got a huge lesson here on my channel with that thumbnail that breaks down literally every guitar part in the song, so be sure to check that one out. So whenever he gets onto the two string ascending thing at the end of that lick, that's when things get interesting because the phrase that he plays is kind of unusual. He walks down six notes, and then restarting from that same note that he just ended on, he walks back up six notes. This means that you have this doubled up note that kind of serves as like a little cul-de-sac in the lick to turn you around.
It's a really cool phrasing idea and a lot of players don't gravitate towards that doubled up note kind of thing. So I like that enough to where I thought I should steal it. So I put it down here lower on the neck starting off on the C note to see how it sounds down there. And that's the first lick that you heard in the video. Just start off here on the C note on your high E string and you're going to walk down the scale six notes. And then from that E note you finished on, walk back up six notes. So you end up with... And that's the first phrase. After that, what you're going to do is move up to the next note in the scale, the D note. And play the exact same idea. Walk down six. Walk up six. Next, we're going to move up to E. Finish out here on F. And then just to resolve, I'll put us down there at E at the end. So the entire thing is going to sound like this. I'd recommend alternate picking your entire way through that. We'll talk about the alternate picking specifics a little bit later on in the video. So that sounded cool, but I think it was just a little bit too close to the source material. So I got to thinking about what I could do with that little cul-de-sac note, the doubled up note at the end of it. What I was thinking about is rather than hitting it twice and walking back up the same group of notes that I had already played down, what if I use that as an opportunity to sneak in a position shift like this? See what happened right there? I used my first finger twice in a row, going from the E note up to the F note to restart from this group of three. So one phrase of this ends up sounding like this right here. So I covered a lot more ground right there. Rather than playing up and down the exact same six notes, I shifted up a position so I'm gaining a little bit more range in the lick. Cool thing about this is too is for my right hand it's mechanically identical. Da 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 da. It's the exact same with either lick. So if my right hand can do one, it can definitely do the other as well. Okay, so from that first group of notes, we're gonna use this as an opportunity to sneak up to the next group of notes. So right there I started off on the E note. And again, rather than doubling up and playing this note again, I'm gonna shift up here to the A note and play up that group of six. So, so far we've played down six, shift up and go up six, shift up and go down six. After this, we're gonna shift up to the A note and play up six. After this, shift up to the G. After this, shift up to C. Shifting up to B. Shifting up to E, and then I resolved on A. So that moves way higher up the neck by making one tweak, and it sounds way different than the original Jakey Lee lick. This is good thievery. Whenever you're playing licks like that that have a bunch of position shifts in them, it really encourages you to keep your thumb nice and loose on the back of the neck. You cannot be death gripping that thing. You can't really have that mangle it and strangle it thumb over the top position whenever you're playing those kinds of stretches too. It just doesn't really work well for that. So this is a good lick to practice your thumb posture with. Keep that thumb at like the midline of the neck really nice and loose and glide up and down the neck like I was showing you. So like I said, both licks are mechanically identical for the right hand, but it still might present some picking difficulties for you guys. If you're starting this with a downstroke and alternate picking your way through it, which I do recommend, you'll notice that all the string changes happen after downstrokes. There's one right there when we go to the next string. And there's a downstroke right there to get us back to the high E. So all the changes are happening after downstrokes. And again, that's the same even if I play the modified one. Always downstroke changes. So that means that, you know, if you're like a Troy Grady cracking the code kind of guy like myself, this is very much an upward pick slanting lick. That means our uh, downstrokes need to go out and away from the instrument and our upstrokes need to go into the strings like that in order to make those downstroke changes happen a little bit more easier.
you'll notice with every one of those downstrokes, it was out and away from the strings. It makes it a lot easier to get back into the strings whenever you change. But the cool thing is, if that's tricky for you because you're not really that kind of picker, you could modify this entire thing to starting off on an upstroke instead. And then all the string changes are gonna happen after upstrokes. It'd look like this. Or if you're playing the original. So if the downstroke changes are fine yet, just try flipping the picking around and you might have an easier time with it. But let's continue that exploration of thievery because what we did is we took an ascending lick and we made it another ascending lick that made it a little bit more different ascending lick. But they're still at the end of the day ascending licks, right? What if we took that exact same concept and uh, Missy Elliott style flipped it and reversed it and made everything go down the neck instead? Again, this is getting like a two for one out of everything you learn. Anytime I learn a lick, like a sequence lick from somebody's solo, I try to imagine what would it sound like going in the opposite direction instead. Okay, so let's start off here from the A note on the B string for number 10. So the original idea was to walk down six notes and then walk back up six notes. Let's reverse that now. Let's start off on this A note. Let's walk up six. This is gonna be our new cul-de-sac or kind of turnaround note. Let's walk down six from there. So you'd end up with a phrase that sounds like this. We could then move that down the scale here to the G. Down to F. And down here to E. I don't think I'd ever hear that and think that's a ripoff of that lick from Bark at the Moon. It doesn't sound anything like it because we've taken it in a different direction. So if we did the descending version of the second iteration that we did, it would be a little bit more complicated, right? Because what we're gonna do is walk up six notes and then shift down a note with our little finger. Then shift down with our first finger. Then shift down with the little finger. It's a really challenging phrase to play, but it sounds cool. And again, it sounds nothing like what we originally copied. This is just a great way to get more bang for your buck out of every lick that you learn. I recommend you guys do this with everything. You learn a cool sequence lick that you like, try it in another scale. Try it in another direction. Try changing something subtly enough to where now it's suddenly your lick and not something you copied from somebody else's solo. And now you're thieving like a real pro. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that one at least half as much as I'm enjoying this lovely new Jackson SL2HT. This thing is seriously amazing already. This is actually the first guitar I've ever had with these, these EMG sexually active pickups in it. I'm liking them so far. It's just a good classic metal tone and especially combined with the hardtail and the neck through design. This thing sounds amazing, and it plays like butter. Let me know if you guys want to see a full Meet the Machines video all about it, where I give you all the specs and do some playing so you can hear all the different tones it's capable of, and all that jazz. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to grab those practice tracks, downloadable tabs, and guitar profiles over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Even a buck a month gets you the goods. That's almost as cheap as free. Thanks so much for liking the video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but I recommend getting away from the computer machine, maybe going outside for a little bit and get some sunshine, and then get right back to mashing some rope. Let's click it. More picket.